Greetings everybody. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Azure Identity Protection. If you've been familiar with Azure Active Directory, you might know that there are a couple of features in Azure Active Directory which can be covered in details and Azure Identity Protection is one of them. And I'm going to cover this concept in two part videos. The first part, which is the, this part that I'm talking, it's going to cover uh, how Azure Identity Protection works under the hood because we need to understand how does it work before we can implement it and before we can use it. In this video, we're going to talk about the risks, sign-in risk, uh, user risks, and how Azure Identity Protection calculate the risks. And if you are already familiar with this concept, you can switch to part two of this series, which is going to talk about how we can implement it and we will have a demo of actual example and how uh, Azure Identity Protection will help us in order to secure identities in our environment. So stay with us for this video. So everything I'm going to explain will be based on this image as you can see and this image is not quite hard to find out. You can simply find it in uh, technical document of uh, Azure Identity Protection. So I'm going to explain how does it work because it seems a bit complicated. But uh, if we drill down if we, and if we open exactly the processes on how does it work, it will be quite clear. So everything I say, it will be based on this picture. As you can see, I'm not going to invent anything. I'm not going to just introduce something that from nowhere, everything is based on TechNet and everything is basically written and quite documented so you can look it up so the first thing how it works so how does it work first thing first i have to say that azure identity protection will work under the hood automatically and there's nothing for you to configure everything is done by microsoft it's done by azure and there is nothing to worry about and there is no advanced configuration that you need to do everything is done perfectly under the hood so this is the first point. And how does it work? The second point, it is that Azure Identity Protection will work based on calculation of the risk. And what does it mean? Well, it means that, for example, if a user logs in from um, a not safe QSC, we can say, Azure Identity Protection will find out that the user is logging in from an unsafe environment and it will flag the user with a risk. So what happens is that the next time the user wants to log in, the risk will be considered for the future logins. So it sounds quite complicated, but it will stay with me. I'm going to talk about this and it will be clear enough for you. So we can say that the first thing is the Azure Identity Protection will work under the hood by calculation of risks. So once the risk is detected, it will decide. It will decide if the risk in is, for example, the user one trying to log in from a risk environment, the Azure Identity Protection will find out that this is risky and it will present the user uh, to by inputting the information or by using another method of uh, multi-factor authentication. If the login is quite very risky, it will present a self-service password reset for portal for the user so that uh, the user can reset the password and the risk will be cleared. And as we said, that Azure Identity Protection will decide based on risk status of the user, risk status of the logging. So let's give an example in order to fully understand how does it work before we move to the demo. Let's imagine that we have a user account, user one, and this user wants to log into Azure. Azure portal and we have Azure Identity Protection enabled. So let's see how does it work. When a user wants to log in to Azure portal or whatever, which is pro protected by Azure Identity Protection, uh, it will need to enter the credential by typing the email or the password. Once it is done, Azure Identity Protection it will look up inside the database and see if there is a history of the user logging or not, if there is a risk history for the user or not. 
If there is not, it will simply consider the user login, which means that the, if the username and password is correct, the user is allowed to log in and uh, inside the database of Azure Identity Protection, it will flag user one with a risk status of uh, healthy, okay, unsafe, whatever, and things like that. Just because the user was able to log in successfully and there was no risks behind the uh, behind this logging, Azure Identity Protection will flag the logging as a safe logging and it will be logged in Azure Identity Protection. Imagine another scenario. In this scenario, the same user, I mean the real user, the one who has the username and password, it will try to log into Azure Portal, but this time it will try to use Tor Browser. And why is that? Because it simply wants to present itself as an animal and don't, it doesn't want to uh, someone to find out the IP address. And if you know that a Tor browser, it can be used in order to surf internet anonymously. But the point is that Azure Identity Protection will consider anonymous browsing a risk. So when a risk is detected, Azure Identity Protection will need to ensure that the user who's trying to access Azure Portal is the exactly same user because of the risk. So what happens is if the user tries to log in with the same username and password to uh, connect to Azure Portal, but from a Tor browser in order to browse anonymously, once the user is presented to Azure, it will type the username and password and Azure Identity Protection will find out that the user is coming from an anonymous an anonymous IP address and since this is a risk the Azure Identity Protection will provide uh, the user and it will force the user to pass from multi-factor authentication so it will present the user a multi-factor authentication if the user successfully pass the multi-factor authentication the user is authenticated successfully and there will no risk in that which means that because the user comes from an anonymous IP address, but Azure Identity Protection, it provided MFA to the users coming from an anonymous IP, it can ensure that the user is exactly the same user as he claims to be. So the user will be logged in and there will be no risk. And since there is no risk, no risk will change for user one. And the user one risk status will always be safe. But Imagine if the user was not able to pass multi-factor authentication. For example, the same user is trying to access Azure portal, but this is not exactly the same user. Someone gained access to username and password of user one, but this is not user one exactly. So he's trying to gain access Azure portal with credential of uh, user one, and again with using anonymous uh, browsing by using Tor browser or whatever. So once the user goes to Azure portal, the first thing first, it will provide the username and password. Since the user is coming from an anonymous IP browsing utility like Tor, it will be presented by a form of multi-factor authentication. If the user pass it, it will be logged in. But let's say the user will not be able to pass multi-factor authentication. If this is the case, the connection of the user will be denied and uh, it will not have access to Azure portal and also a risk detected. Why? Because the user wanted to try to connect to Azure portal by uh, credential of user one, but because it's coming from an anonymous uh, IP browsing tool and he was unable to pass multi-factor authentication, Azure Identity Protection will consider it a risk because this is a real risk because if the, the guy was the real guy who claims to be, he could simply pass multi-factor authentication. And since he cannot and he didn't, it is a risk. So the, the user won't be able to log into Azure portal and the risk is detected and the risk is also logged for user one. The change is logged in Azure Identity Protection and as we can see the user one status uh, for risk column is now yellow. It's, it's not green anymore. 
And as you can see, the risk status of user one is now yellow. And let's say that the time passes and so many connections for user one and the risk status of the user one from yellow will turn to red, which is critical risk. So what does happen when a risk, a critical risk is detected and logged in Azure Identity Protection and the next time the real user will try to log into uh, Azure Portal? So the next time the user one, the real user one, wants to log into Azure Portal, it will need to co connect by using the username and password. The username and password, it will enter. But since there is a risk, it also need to bypass multi-factor authentication. So the user will successfully pass multi-factor authentication. And now, Azure Identity Protection can say that the user one is exactly the guy he's claiming to be. So since there is a risk and this risk is critical for logged for user one in Azure Identity Protection, we need to ensure that this risk will no longer be in use. In this situation, the Azure Identity Protection will provide a portal for user, the user one, uh, a self-service password reset portal in order to allow user one to reset the password. Why it happens? It's because Azure Identity Protection will decide based on risks. And the risk can indicate that someone in somewhere else has the username and password of user one and he was trying to log in from an anonymous browsing utility like Tor, but who I presented multi-factor authentication for the user, but he failed. So I assume that someone has the password and credential of the user one. So you really need to change your password. Otherwise, your account is compromised. So the user will need to reset the password. Once the reset password is done, the user will be able to log in. And also, the risk status is changed from critical to safe. And this is how it works under the hood. Just before we move for demo, we need to fall, we need to understand just um, the risks. Actually, in Azure Identity Protection, there are two type of risks: the sign-in risk and the user risk. So, what are these two? Uh, if we consider our example that we talked earlier, we can say that the sign-in risk is the risk that exactly is detected during the signing of the user this phase exactly i'm talking about so what is the signing risk as uh, if you remember we talked about the anonymous ip browsing anonymous browsing by using um, a tor browser this is a signing risk because azure identity protection will find out that someone is trying to sign in with a tor browser so this is signing risk but user risk is quite different user risk is the risk that is inside Azure Identity Protection and this feature Azure Identity Protection will decide based on signing risk and user risk. So user risk we can say that this is what we can see within the Azure Identity Protection and it is logged and it is flagged. So there are many ways to find out the signing risk uh, you remember that we talked about uh, anonymous browsing, one of them. Another one is leaked credential. Azure Identity Protection work with uh, security professionals and uh, security researchers in order to find out the leaked credentials from dark web, from website that provide uh, leaked credential. And then it will include those leaked credential in Azure Identity Protection. So for the next time that you want someone tries to log in with a leaked credential, it will log a uh, risk and it will decide based on that risk. So sign in from anonymous IP addresses, we talked about it. Another one is impossible travel. So what is impossible travel? It means that let's say that user one has a tendency to log in from Paris office. But just five minutes after the first login, some someone with try uh, is trying to log in with using the credential of user one um, but this time not from paris but this time from new york 
So as we can see, this is something it's, it's not possible just from five minutes different. Someone's tried to log in from Paris and the next, next five minutes, someone tries to log in with the same credential from New York. This is not possible. So Azure Identity Protection will uh, consider that as a sign in risk also. So how does it work? It's that the Azure Identity Protection has a learning curve, which means that during a period of like 20 days, 30 days, it will log and look through all the activities of a user and it will conclude that the user one is always trying to log into Azure portal from op office of Paris. The next time that if he tries to log in from uh, another country, it will detect a risk. So it can be a low risk and it, the user needs to pass the multi-factor authentication. But this is the way that Azure, ATP, uh, Azure Identity Protection is also works. Signing from unfamiliar locations and also signing from infected devices are also other options for this Azure Identity Protection. Like if the user was trying to log in from a server that is the server is quite infected with so many viruses that it will also log a risk for that user. And also sign-ins from IP addresses with suspicious activity. It's like uh, we can say that if someone tries to implement a server in our environment and from that server it tries to gather all sort of information and all sort of reconnaissance attack, that IP address we can be uh, considered as an IP address with suspicious activities. And that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you have a clear vision on how Azure Identity Protection can work under the hood. And uh, if you're interested in implementing it and using it to find out how does it work in real action, you can watch my next video on part two of this series in which I will explain exactly with real action examples of how does it work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun.